Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another DirectX tutorial. Now I started this series back again a few weeks ago, but then I got sick, so I had to take a couple of weeks off again. Because I'm sure you wouldn't want to hear me sneezing and sniffling and stuff like that on camera, so... I'm better now and I'm recording stuff now. So last tutorial, we discussed a way to wrap up everything related to a game object in a specific, in a specialized gameplay object class. We wrapped up the game sprite in the gameplay object class, and then we took some of the functionality out of the game sprite class and put it in the gameplay object where it should be, where game sprite is only responsible for actually drawing and things like that. Storing the texture, storing the sprite, object. And that is what the gameplay object does. It'll initialize it. It'll draw it by using a position that you pass to it. And then it will make sure the sprite and textures are released. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about the correct way to update sprites. If we run our previous sample, you'll see we have a two sprites that are currently being updated in the game. It's being updated every tick, every time the game loops. Now the correct way to update sprites and game objects is to not do it based on loops, but on time. You know, how far you want the object to travel in a second versus how far you want it to travel every loop. Because on some computers, a loop might be faster than other computers. Time, however, is consistent. Even if your FPS drops very low, it's still gonna keep, it's still, a second is still gonna be a second. So that is the correct way to do this. So we're going to create the class that will hold our time object. All right, so let's create our header file here. Right click the header files, click add, new item. It's gonna be a header file and let's call this game time. All right, now let's right click the source files, let's Go to add, new item, it's going to be a C++ file, game time. Alright, so in the header file, we need to create our class here. So I'm going to use my usual pound if n d e f include guards. And then inside the include guards, we're going to include the header Windows header file. Now the Windows API gives us functionality to query the high performance counter and get the frequency. And with the frequency, the, with the frequency, it cannot change while the system is running, so we only have to do it once, so we'll do it in the initialize. And that will give us a number of ticks per second that can that we need to use. Now, we also get a second thing from the Windows API, performance counter. That gives us a number of current ticks. So we create a start tick count and an end tick count and calculate the difference. Then we use the number of ticks per second and use that in our formula to get the number of elapsed seconds. So the two things we get from the Windows API are the frequency, which is the number of ticks per second, and the current value of the counter, which are ticks. And then in our formula, we calculate a difference 
every time the game loops, every time we update the counter, we get a new current value for the counter. And then we calculate the difference between that and the start. Then we divide by frequency. Frequency divided by frequency over seconds gives us seconds. Let me bring this over here. So we have a, a variable that contains our frequency. So then we divide that by our frequency per second. The frequencies cancel out, and then the second, since it's division over division, the seconds moves to the top, so now we just have a variable that contains our seconds value. So, that's our formula, is we get the current counter, we subtract the difference, we get the difference, and then we divide that by the frequency per second variable. The frequencies cancel out, that leaves us just seconds for the variable type. Alright, so the header. We need that include Windows H because it's part of the Windows API. So class game time. And a public area. Float. Elapsed game time, float, total game time, bool, initialize, void, update, then private, lawn, lawn, that's what we get from the performance counter. It's a type lawn lawn. Float frequency per second. Alright. That's it for now. We'll obviously extend this later. In the CPP file, C. We need to implement our header, so we need to include game time dot h bool game time initialize return true. All right, before we return true, large underscore integer. I. This is what we get from the two API calls, the frequency and the counter. It, we pass it a reference to a large integer. Get frequency from counter. The frequency cannot change while the system is running. So we only need to do this once. If not query performance frequency, we need to pass do a pointer to a large integer. So the ampersand i and then two closing parentheses. So if that was not successful. We need to return false. The following gives us the number of ticks per second. Frequency seconds is equal to, we cast this as a float, i dot quad part. We access the quad part of the large integer, then we cast that as a float for the frequency per second. Gets the current value of the counter. 
Now the second API call. Query performance counter. Ampersand I. We need to pass it the pointer again. Now start is equal to I dot quad part. So the start is going to be that. Total game time is going to be zero. Elapsed game time is going to be zero. And then we return true. Now in the update function, void game time update. So we update this by querying the performance counter again. So we need another large integer again. And then we query the performance counter to get the current value of the counter. And then elapsed game time is equal to float i.quad part minus start. So we calculate the difference between when we started and the current value. And then we divide it by frequency seconds. So that only leaves us seconds as the variable. Elapsed game time, this equation results in seconds. So we are correct. Start is equal to i dot quad part. We reset start because all we are worried about is the elapsed game time. Now total game time, we can just add elapsed game time. Alright, so the query performance frequency gives us the frequency of the counter. Now it cannot change while the system is running, so we only have to do that once in the initialize function query performance free or query performance counter gives us the current value of the counter and then we use the value we got from the frequency in a formula that results in seconds in order to get our elapsed time and eventually our total time all right so now we need to go into game.cpp and game.h and we need to have a pointer to game time now we need to include game time All right, in the CPP file for the game class, in the initialize function, we need to have one more if here. Game time is equal to new game time. If not game time arrow initialize return false. I'm going to add brackets here just to make those the same. All right. So that is it for the game time class. Next tutorial, it'll be a short tutorial. We are going to implement this and update our objects based on time. So this tutorial, we just implemented the class for our game time. I discussed the two API calls, the get performance frequency, query performance frequency. That gives us the frequency of the counter. Query performance counter is the second one we will use, and that just gives us the current value of the counter. And then in a formula, we use the frequency per second in order to give us a value that is a seconds value. Not a ticks value, but a seconds value. 
And then we can use that in elapsed time or total time and use that for our update logic, which we'll do next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.